Adam Lynch. The city of Pittsburgh has been identified with many winning teams through the years. The city of champions has toasted the success of the Pirates, Steelers, and Penguins as each captured the World Series, Super Bowl, and Stanley Cup time and time again. And with each new win added to the pride and spirit that we know can only be found here. But before the city's winning era in athletic events began, America was engaged in something which would have much more serious results than a tally of runs or compared point scores at a game's end. Our country had seen it before. So this time we called it World War II. What most Pittsburghers don't know is that the city's namesake unit, the 99th Infantry Division, was critical to the Allied success in one of the war's most famous battles, the Battle of the Bulge where its soldiers valiantly held an area called the North Shoulder against incredible odds and the unyielding attack of Nazi Germany's final offensive. Its shoulder patch is a five-sided shield borrowed from the coat of arms of the Earl of Chatham, William Pitt, for whom the city of Pittsburgh is named. Its nine blue and nine white squares numbered it 99, and the black background represents the Iron District of Pennsylvania. With the buildup of America's war effort, both here at home and in the ever-expanding combat theaters in Europe and the Pacific, the 99th became one of three Army divisions ordered to active service in November 1942. Camp Van Dorn, Mississippi, became the new home away from home for thousands of young recruits, mostly from Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Maryland, who would ultimately become the fighting force of the checkerboard division. Major General Thompson Lawrence became the first commander of the 99th, and he wasted no time in telling his soldiers that their future fate rested squarely in their own hands, and that the division's history would be written by them and them alone. We have started basic training, and there are already promising signs that the 99th Division will fulfill our ambition of being one of the crack units of the Army. There is no reason why we can't make it the very best in the world. Though General Lawrence instilled the fighting spirit in the 99th, it became Brigadier General Walter Lauer who took the division's reins in August of 1943 and continued training for the battle he knew would be imminent. The division began tactical maneuvers in Louisiana, then moved to Camp Maxey, Texas for additional training. A year passed before the 99th, now field-tested and eager for action, embarked from Boston on troop ships headed overseas. Landing in Scotland and throughout Great Britain, the 99th crossed the English Channel to Le Havre, France, then proceeded overland to Obel, Belgium, and prepared for combat. Coming online, the 99th was structurally comprised of three infantry regiments, four 105-millimeter howitzer field artillery battalions, and a full complement of reconnaissance, signal, quartermaster, ordnance, medical engineer, and headquarter support elements. It also attached a tank destroyer battalion, an additional field artillery battalion, and an armored field artillery battalion. The 99th began operations against the enemy on November 9, 1944, first defending the northern sector of the Ruhr River south of Monchot, and later conducting aggressive patrols and probes along the Siegfried Line. Although the 99th had begun suffering as well as inflicting casualties, most of the soldiers felt that the offensive was proceeding well and were silently hoping for a German surrender. The ghost-like Ardennes were cold and quiet on December 14, 1944, and an unspoken feeling of optimism about the end to the war helped the spirits of those who defended a 22-mile stretch of a thin 80-mile front where the enemy lay over the next hillside. On December 16th, however, that silence, as well as any hope for peace, was shattered by the roar of incoming artillery and blazing cannons of an attacking 12th SS Panzer Division. Even after the front was split in two by the attacking German army, the stubborn 99th and 2nd Division soldiers denied the enemy breakthrough. On the third day of the battle, the badly disorganized combined forces of the 99th and 2nd pulled back to Elsenborn Ridge, the north shoulder of the bulge. From their stand, 
they dauntlessly repulsed the continuing onslaught throughout the remainder of the enemy offensive. Reporters from the Stars and Stripes covered the ferocious action at Elsenborn, where the 99th suffered tremendous casualties. But when no public recognition of the unit's tenacity in holding that north shoulder appeared, the troops became discouraged. In a press release by United Press war correspondent John McDermott, it was revealed that U.S. intelligence had considered the 99th a secret unit during that Battle of the Bulge. But now, the real story could be told. The story about how the 99th Infantry Division battled babies not only turned back an overwhelmingly heavier enemy force, but also inflicted such heavy casualties upon it that its forward momentum was halted completely. The vital breakthrough the German army so desperately sought had been denied. As the Third Reich's resistance became weaker, the big push began. The 99th crossed the Earth Canal and quickly became the first American division to reach the Rhine River, as well as the first entire infantry division to cross the famed Ludendorff Bridge at Remagen, where the rapidly advancing Allied thrust was met by dug-in and determined German diehards. It was during this drive that 99th soldiers under the command of Lieutenant Harry Parker of the 393rd Infantry Regiment conducted one of the few bayonet charges on record in World War II. Now the Stars and Stripes reported that Parker had ordered his 40 men to fix bayonets. Fix bayonets! After they became surrounded by three enemy companies. Screaming like Indians, they charged a surprised enemy, which after a short skirmish quickly fled the area. The soldiers of the 99th were now seasoned combat veterans, and on the attack, the Allied surge continued forward as they liberated town after town, capturing a broken enemy and freeing prisoners of war and European citizens who had been forced into Nazi slave labor camps. The fighting thickened dramatically when the 99th entered the Ruhr pocket, where a large contingent of what remained of the once mighty Third Reich Army was virtually encircled. With the 99th in the thick of it again, the pocket collapsed completely in mid-April, almost ensuring a swift defeat for Germany. The 99th remained dauntless all the way to the Danube, traveling some 280 miles only 24 hours after action in the Ruhr pocket had been declared clear. Less than one month later, on May 9, 1945, victory in Europe was declared after German officials agreed to an unconditional surrender. The 99th went into occupational duties and in light of its battlefield achievements was visited by both General George Patton and General Dwight Eisenhower. For its heroic efforts, the 99th received two citations, the first for action at Malmedy and the Siegfried Line, and the second for rebuffing the German offensive in the Ardennes at Elsenborn Ridge. The 99th was also authorized the wearing of the Belgian Fourager. So when you think about all of the things which have made Pittsburgh this special place it is today, the city of champions, remember to include the battle babies of the 99th Infantry Division, the soldiers who kept not only Pittsburgh, but the rest of America and her allies free more than 50 years ago.